everybody. I'm here with Dr. Mark Driscoll. Hi, Mark. Hi, good to see you again. So great to see you too. We're here at the Sixth International Fascia Research Congress. Mark, we've been doing this now since 2007. What's the big deal about fascia? Who cares about fascia? What is fascia and why, should, why does it matter? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, in the beginning, like you said, 2007, there was probably less people of interest now um, compared to today. And I think it's getting more and more attention as it deserves. For me, it's, you know, there's a mechanical component. So I'm an engineer, if you didn't know. So there's a mechanical component in how it goes about control, not controlling, but influencing our everyday movements. So that's kind of my draw to it. And I think you have a lot of body workers, clinicians, a whole mix of bag of different backgrounds who are also starting to acknowledge that it's more important than we thought before. Yeah, and, and you know, one of the things that I know you do is that you've created medical devices for people. Uh, and, and I can just only imagine that when people are going through something like that, where they're needing some sort of a prosthetic or, or, or any type of a device to help them in life, do you bring any type of fascial education to those type of people? <laughs> I mean, that's an excellent question. So yeah, I did develop some medical devices in, in the past. And this was before I kind of ventured into research and, and academia. So there wasn't a kind of fascia mindset in those device designs, it was purely from a like functional perspective. If I had to go back and, and do it, yeah, I could see potentially drawing some insight from what I've learned over all the years about collaborating, you know, great researchers and mm -hmm. clinicians like yourself. So, and and you know, like I said, we started this in two thousand and seven when we had that first Fascia Research Congress. Do you see that because of technology, we're learning more now about fascia? Do you think it's the technology that's allowing that, or or are we still slow on the uptake of utilizing technology to learn about this system? Yeah, it's all. There's always a play where like technology takes over, and then we have more data than we know what to do with, or there's kind of clinical insight that takes over, and then the technology is trying to catch up and actually quantify what many people are describing and, and observing. Right. So I think in the field of fascia, I would say it's the latter. So you have consistent observation between a number of clinicians, well experienced in the field and scientists like me trying to catch up and, and to quantify it. So I say we're at that stage and hopefully some things are starting to come out and in meetings like today you get discussions, collaborations, but mm -hmm. I think we need more ways to quantify it. I mean, I, as a clinician who had the opportunity, I've done one low back pain research study using MELT. We, we got to work with Tom Finley and looking at that thoracolumbar fascia, I keep hearing it yeah. mentioned. One thing that I haven't heard that I'm actually excited about because this is, I'm, I'm about to embark on trying to do a pilot study on talking about the foot and how important just the sensory aspects of your footing and ground reaction force are and how your brain is figuring out how to stabilize you because of what is going on in your feet. And we've seen a tremendous amount of change in you know everything from balance to just overall back pain just by treating the hands and feet. And I'm curious, you know, here we are at this Congress. I haven't heard anybody talk about the diaphragm or breath. I haven't heard anybody talk about the footing, which I just feel like might just be my opportunity in 2025 to see if I can come back and do something with some of these researchers to see if maybe we can get a study going on about that. Why, yeah. why are they not talking about that? Though? So I think you definitely could, I mean, for sure, <laughs> come back in 2025 and, <laughs> as you are here, of course. and. The foot, I mean, we saw in, I think Stuart McGill addressed the importance of that ground reaction, mm -hmm. kind of adhesion, he was saying, you know, I forget who he said, but he said, you know, a golfer would have spikes if they could to kind of increase that feel. Mm -hmm. For me, the foot, of course, is important. People were constantly pointing to those kind of posterior lines, connective lines, whatever you want to call it, of you know, fascial planes and tissues. So for sure, it's important. Um, when I look at spine, I have to make certain exclusions. So I'm not quite, like I said, not quite the tools not there yet. And I think I was getting asked that question. I said, yeah, we're, we're catching up with our, with our methods. So, you know, in short, the foot's important. The hand, you're the expert um, much more than I am. And I can't really comment 
I can appreciate, I guess, from a therapy perspective, how you'd address that, but I don't know how it would come in, at least to the spine. So maybe I'm even lower than considering it all. Yeah, I really think that, you know, because, and to me, I think that it goes beyond fascia. Like, I think one of the things I'm, I sort of struggle with is this need to, you know, define fascia because that's what we like to do. We like to define things, we like to put it in a nice box and this is what it is. And because fascia is doing so many things and provides so many roles and this whole concept of, is it a tissue? Is it an organ? And is it a system? And when you start to classify it, you know, are we not maybe, you know, if you get too narrow, like we do in research, right? You have to have all these exclusions and you get more narrow and more narrow. And so you're saying the outcome was this, but now people are like poking holes and going, well, what about, did you study this or this or this and it's like I suck <laughs> like, yeah. I, can't, I, haven't, I haven't I haven't shared anything there's nothing to conclude I wonder if you know are we ever going to get to a point where there is a consensus about what fascia is what it does and then again how to help clinicians measure any changes and then, and then how do we extrapolate it back to the nervous system? Because isn't that just, uh, you know, either how I feel or can I measure it some other way, right? I mean, are we really measuring it in its full extent of what it does or are we not? I don't think we are. Definitely we're not. Um, as far as what to name it, there's much smarter people than me arguing over that. And not arguing, discussing, I should say. Discussing. Yeah. <laughs> as far as were they, you know, if ever we're going to figure it out, I, I hope not, because once you figure it out, then you lose the fine when you don't get to meet. Um, but also, I don't think, I think it's too complex to actually put our thumb on it. So, regarding kind of neurological aspect, um, for sure it's important. And yes, as a researcher, we're kind of narrow-minded in scope and we're careful in kind of alluding to its application. But I think that's one of the great parts of these meetings is we're, like you said, we get exactly. poked. And you know, a lot of the speakers, they got asked the question, and like, yeah, that's a, you know, a really good insight or line of thought. And I think at least the feedback I've received from the speakers is they, they really appreciate and enjoy that. So again, you know, experts from the clinical audience, poking holes in researchers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was amazing, you know, when Dr. Peter Friedel talked last year, I just remember going up to him and saying, I think I must have been under a rock to miss, like, where'd you show up from? But I think this is really going to transform how we're looking at cancer metastasis and his whole concept of how cancer cells kind of push into the collagen, the collagen push back, and that's how it sort of anchors, and then mm -hmm. that can be metastasis, and of course, you know, trying to ask such a, almost an existential question, but not that isn't, isn't it then something that we need to look at the fluid matrix, like the actual fluid component of fascia. And I know that, you know, Carla talking about the hyaluronin and this is so important. I think that there's a big piece of research that actually we're just at a paradigm of going from the fibrous mechanical elements of fascia into this more fluid system that does have a deeper relationship, I think maybe with the autonomic nervous system. Yeah, I would, I would not disagree. I would actually agree with what you're saying. Everything is true. Um, it's tough, right? Because so Dr. Friedel's presentation, which was amazing, and it's okay. Are you striking the kind of tumor the same way? And everyone has their own kind of schools of thoughts and methods, so that it would be impossible to assess. I, I think he was right, and he's, he's being very cautious, especially about yeah. something as important as, as a tumor. Yeah. Um, Sounds logical, don't massage a tumor. I mean, like, that just seems so simple, right? Yeah, but I think, you know, there's some people that disagree, like there's some people that disagree with me too, and that's, I guess, the great discourse we're kind of changing. But I would always err on the side of caution, but I'm a cautious Indeed. person. So I've asked everybody here this. Um, seems like a simple question, just always curious what somebody like you would say is, uh, if you had to tell anybody on the planet, if you, in your opinion, both from what you've seen in clinical research and science, if you told somebody the most important thing to help you live a more healthy life, what would it be? I would say don't get sedentary, especially there's so much evidence that point to what, not just here, but in all fields, I mean, hands down, regardless of your background, it's just, it's, it's bad for you. It, it really is, and um, of course, as, as we age, it's more difficult, but I think there's an amazing amount of data and not much that conflicts it that suggests 
you know, as move, as active as possible, whatever your interest is, but I think that would Indeed. be my... Indeed. So you've heard it again, <laughs> get up and move. Mark, thanks so much for everything that you've done to contribute to this incredible collective of really brilliant minds. We really appreciate everything okay. that you do. We're going to get you melting your feet too, so <laughs> stay tuned. Happy melting, guys. Take care.